You are listening to the Wells Report. My name is John David Wells. Our telephone number is 844-RADIO-US, 844-723-4687. This just in. The president has reported the USS Boxer shot down an Iranian drone in the Strait of Hormuz amid heightened tensions. Remember, the um, the Iranians... Uh, saw fit to seize a British tanker in the Strait. And uh, we will have some reporting on that a little bit later on. Currently, we're dealing with other news here on the Wells Report, but we've got that coming up. Stick around. We'll bring you completely up to date. The USS Boxer shot down an Iranian drone uh, over the Strait of Hormuz. So keep that in mind. And like I said, there was a seizure of a British tanker in the Strait by Iranian officials. More about that coming up later today on the Wells Report here on the USA Radio Network. So the President of the United States has a rally in Greenville, North Carolina, and he brings up Ilhan Omar, and the crowd begins to chant, send her back, send her back. Now, the President disavowed that this afternoon, and I think that was a mistake. I think it was wrong for him to do so. I think he should have doubled down on it and let the chips fall where they may. Uh, because, because once again, you show weakness and these people will pounce all over you, and that's exactly what they've done. Ilan Omar, other Democrats, a slew of commentators united in condemning President Trump. After the crowd at North Carolina's Make America Great Again rally broke out in a striking chant of, sen- chant of Send Her Back, while the president criticized Omar and other members of the so-called progressive Democrat squad. The three-word chant, which Trump did not respond to, at least that's that's accurate reporting. I saw the entire video. He didn't respond to. It referred to the president's tweet on Sunday in which he asked why unnamed Democrat congresswomen don't go back and help fix the totally broken and crime-infested places from which they came, then come back and show us how it's done. I think that's a completely fair political statement. It's being whipped up into some frothy, racist screed by the people who are experts on frothy, racist screeds. And that, of course, the mainstream media. The president made a mistake. There's never been a chance. There's never been any opportunity for any Republican, and certainly President Trump, and certainly with this mainstream media, where an apology has ever worked. Think about this for just a couple of seconds. Think back to any co- any conversation having to do with the supposed um, miscreancy of, of a Republican president, this one, President Bush, what have you. Think about any Republican, say, news commentator, for example, that has ever done something that he felt that he needed to apologize for. Or she. Did, did any of those apologies ever work? The answer is no. So why bother to apologize? The trick is to not say something you have to apologize for later, but if you do say something, then you better own it, and you better stand up straight and tall, and you better say, I believe, I I agree completely. Believe me, it'll only be a few more days before it all blows over in favor of something else he's done. Guess what's back in the news? President Trump's hush money to women. Yeah, okay. Fine, fine. Hush money to women does, at least in my mind, sound a lot better than bimbo eruption squad. But who am I? Telephone number 844-RADIO-US. 844-723-4687. The White House said the president disagreed with the chant. He didn't disagree with the chant. He's the one that said that if these people have such a problem with the United States, they should go back to their originating countries. Something with, I I agree completely. Does that make me a racist? No, it makes me an American. I love this nation. I think people who live here should love this nation. I keep watching Ilan Omar, and by the way, we're going to report on, on her latest political stylings here after the top of the hour. I've been reporting on Ilan Omar trying to turn the United States into Somalia. And I'll I'll be perfectly honest with you. I'll be perfectly honest with you. She cannot go back to Somalia and fix the problems. Because she's a woman. If she goes back and she tries to do anything political, she'd be stoned to death. 
Cleo Marchese, kind enough to share that. It's true. Since Trump has been in office, says Cleo, we finally have an honest dialogue to the point where to point out blatant racism of the left. They use racism to silence conservatives and how they use racism to suppress the left. No, I think they use racism to suppress the right, actually. That's what they do. I think he's making a mistake, too. The chant echoes frustration over the double standards the left and progressive leaders create in this country. She's completely correct. Jim Lafferty says it's clear now that Trump is a racist and his base doesn't care. That's very sad. Well, please do explain to me how it's clear that Trump is a racist. Please do explain the racism, Jim. 844-RADIO-US. I gave him the uh, telephone number. So far, no joy. Come on, Jim. Stand up for what you say. You make it very, you say it's very clear. Well, make it clear to me. I want to know how Trump is racist. I want you to explain it. Because I'm really sure that like everybody else on the left, you can throw that word racism out there, but you can't explain why you're throwing it out there. You simply can't. You're just tossing it out there because, well, that's what you think you should do. Explain the racism. You know, I took people down a, uh, a road of where that entire idea came from. See, Jim, because I'm, I'm old enough to remember a lot of things that I guess you're not. Even though you're, you and I are pretty much the same age. I'm just saying. Look, here's the situation. I think the president made a mistake by not owning it. Just own it, Mr. President. Stop it. Stop it. Don't be don't be afraid. Democrat representatives Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and Ilan Omar alleged today that President Trump is steering the country towards fascism. As they ramped up their criticism of the president in the wake of a fiery rally where he repeatedly blasted the freshman lawmakers. So, let me see if I get this straight. If you're a member of the squad, a member of the squad, if you're a member of the squad and someone disagrees with you, you're a fascist. Is that it? Which, by the way, is a nice turn on the political science involved in, say, for example, oh, I don't know, the Obama administration. Where if you agree- disagreed with anything that the Obama administration wanted to do, you were, wait for it, that's right, a racist. Up to and including voting for President Trump, you're obviously a racist. A racist. You are racist, racist, racist. And now, of course, if you disagree with AOC, Ilan Omar, Tlaib, or any of the other ones, you're obviously a fascist. Ocasio-Cortez speaking to reporters on Capitol Hill. She reacted to the president's recent comments as well as the rally crowd's reaction by saying it shows they're not in politics anymore. We're not in politics anymore. We are in racism. We are in a uh, a fascistic government. Oh, really? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Let's put President Trump over here and let's put let's put AOC, Ilan Omar, uh, Rashida Tlaib and Alana. What's her name from Massachusetts, not Mississippi? Let's put them in each corner. Which ones are the most fascist? You tell me. 844-RADIO-US. 844-723-4687. Ocasio-Cortez says the rhetoric in, rhetoric in recent days could pose personal security issues, not just for lawmakers like herself, but other persons of color. Uh-huh. Right. Sort of like what happened in Baltimore when the president was talking about persons of color. Is that basically the... Oh. You keep bringing up reality, Wells. This is bad. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. Republicans, which are actually Democrats, let me name them for you. Several Republican lawmakers distanced themselves from the chance of send her back that erupted at a North Carolina rally when President Donald Trump attacked a black Democrat lawmaker. Adam Kinziger said that he was disgusted by the chant, which he described as ugly. Trump singled out Representative Ilan Omar at the rally. And uh, he lit into progressive Democrats known as the squad. He suggests lawmakers were un-American and unpatriotic. It's because they're un-American and unpatriotic. Omar, 
Ocasio-Cortez, Ayanna Presley. There we go. Ayanna Presley of Massachusetts. It would make more sense if Ayanna Presley was from Mississippi, don't you think? Elvis Presley, Mississippi. Never mind. And Representative Rashida Tlaib. It's not Tlaib. It is Tlaib. Um, all four are women of color. Oh, my God. Yeah. Uh, some Republicans limited their criticism to the crowd at Trump's rally, not the president himself, which is stupid. Representative Tom Emmer of Minnesota, who heads the Republican National Congressional Committee, criticized the chant, telling reporters there's no place for that kind of talk in our party. Yeah, uh, let me see what happened here. So we did everything right. We did everything right in the 2012 election. The, the Republican Party did everything right in the 2012 election. Is that right? Let's see. Who was running for president in 2012? That would have been uh, that would have been John McCain, who said everything right. He did everything exactly right, fantastic, and lost his patoot. Was that uh, was that 2012 or is that 2008? Actually, that may have been 2008. Or was that Mitt Romney? 2012 Republican candidate. I think I was right the first time. Uh, but I'm going to double check because I don't want to make a mistake. Republican candidates, 2012 Republican candidates. Oh, it was Mitt Romney in 2012. Yeah, yeah. Well, he did. He did everything right too. He was the perfect candidate. Yeah, 2012. No, I said it was John McCain. So John McCain was 2008. So let's go back the last couple of uh, Republican presidential candidacies. 2012. Mitt Romney, the perfect. Republican candidate. Perfect. The the moderates could have not had a better candidate. And he lost his butt. 2008. John McCain could not have a better candidate. And he lost his butt. The President of the United States, Donald Trump, shows up and starts talking like an American. And he wins. What have we learned here? So why are these Republicans now criticizing the people at the rally? Why are they criticizing the president at all? Why are they doing this? Well, because they like losing. I'm sorry, I don't like losing. Do you like losing? I don't like losing. This is good. This Kinzinger guy, he says, I deeply disagree with the extreme left and have been disgusted by their tone. I woke up today equally disgusted. Chants like send her back are ugly wrong and would send chills down the spines of our founding fathers. Let's see. Um, let's see. Political slogans. We're going to unleash the incredible power of Google. Political slogans against... Thomas Jefferson, E-R-S-O-N. Political slogans against Thomas Jefferson. Let's see. Adams versus Jefferson, the birth of negative campaigning. Let's see. In the U.S., negative campaigning can be traced back to John Adams and Thomas Jefferson. Let's see. Things got ugly fast. Jefferson's camp. Accused President Adams of having a hideous hermaphrod. What what was this? I'm sorry, it changed it. It changed its mind. Okay, here we go. Hermaphrod. Hermaphrod. Okay, hermaphroditical. There we go. Hermaphroditical character, which has neither the force and firmness of a man nor the gentleness and sensibility of a woman. In return, Adams called Vice President Jefferson a mean spirited, mean spirited, low lived fellow the son of a half-breed Indian squaw, sired by a Virginia mulatto father. Here, let me read what, uh, let me read what, what's her face said, uh, what's his face, Kinzinger of Illinois. Uh, this ugliness must end. The calls of center back are ugly, wrong, and would sound chills down the spine of our founding fathers. They would actually go, <laughs> I mean, think about this for just a couple. Those are just the first two. John Adams called Vice President Jefferson a mean-spirited, low-lived fellow, son of a half-breed Indian squaw, sired by a Virginia mulatto father. Let's see. Uh, 
Adams was then called a hypocrite, a criminal, a tyrant, a fool. Jefferson was branded a weakling, an atheist, a libertine, and a coward. Martha Washington succumbed to the propaganda, telling a clergyman that Jefferson was the mo- one of the most detestable of mankind. And it got worse from there. I don't know what Republican Party these guys are talking about, but let me tell you something. When it comes to the Founding Fathers, what happens in politics today is it's a cakewalk. So don't don't throw this stuff out, especially if you don't know anything, Mr. Kinzinger. How about you just hush? This is the Wells Report of the USA Radio Network. This report is brought to you by Crescent Tools. Most toolboxes contain a crescent wrench, which tradesmen and DIYers have trusted for more than a century. But what many call a crescent wrench isn't always the real deal. The reason? True crescent wrenches are made by Crescent Tools, which started producing the adjustable wrench in 1907. However, few realize that Crescent is the brand, not the tool. Nor do they understand that Crescent makes more than just wrenches. Brendan Walsh, Director of Product Management at Crescent Tools. What a person thinks is a crescent wrench may just be an adjustable wrench, and there's a difference. We've innovated the Crescent Wrench to meet the needs of today's tool user and have expanded to offer a solid crew of tools in addition to wrenches. While wrenches are their signature products, Crescent manufactures 2,800 tools including files, snips, storage cabinets, and measuring tapes. Establishing Crescent Tools is one of the most respected professional hand tool brands in the world. So, the next time you reach into your toolbox, check to see if it's actually a Crescent Wrench or an imposter. For more information, visit www.crescenttool.com. Are you looking for senior care for your mom or dad but don't know where to start? Hi, I'm Joan London with The Place for Mom. Nobody knows your parent or loved one better than you, and nobody knows senior living better than the experts at A Place for Mom. They've helped thousands of families find the right place for their mom or dad. I was so glad that I called A Place for Mom. My advisor really listened and was truly my partner in finding senior care for my dad. She went out of her way to get to know him as a person and was always there whenever I had a question. The senior living advisors at A Place for Mom partner with thousands of families every month, listening and offering local knowledge and advice to help find the best senior living communities across the country. And it's a free service. Here's the number. Call A Place for Mom at 1-800-370-2715. There's a place for answers, a place for mom. Call today. Call a place for mom at 1-800-370-2715. That's 1-800-370-2715. If you're 85 or younger, would you like peace of mind and comfort for your family? We're Final Expense Direct with an urgent message for you. The average funeral today costs over $8,000, but the most you'll get from government benefits is $255. How will your family pay the difference? We can help. Our senior plans start as low as just a dollar a day and pay up to $30,000 for a funeral and other final expenses. Peace of mind is easy. There's no medical exam. You'll have lifetime coverage, and your plan can't be canceled as long as you pay your premiums. Call now for free information about our senior plans. Answer a few simple questions and receive approval right on the phone. Plus, call right now, and we'll give you a discount prescription card for free. Call 800-561-5716. That's 800-561-5716. Again, 800-561-5716. You are listening to the Wells Report. My name was, was, and still is John David Wells. This is the Wells Report. I was just reading the campaign of 1828 was very nasty, a campaign in which supporters of Andrew Jackson called John Quincy Adams a pimp. (laughs) Yeah, apparently, uh, according to Jackson's allies, uh, Adams... Spent some time as U.S. Minister to Russia. He provided female companionship for the Tsar. Uh, Supporters of John Quincy Adams called Andrew Jackson and his wife polygamists because they had married before their divorces came through. (laughs) Kerwin Swint, an author and professor at Kennesaw State University, called it being particularly hard on the Jackson family. Andrew Jackson's mother was characterized as a common prostitute that sailors brought over for the benefit of the English Navy. 
Jackson himself was called a murderer, a traitor, and mentally unstable. Adams dismissed the vile tone of the campaign, chalking, uh, chalking up the slurs to skunks of party slander. The president was not so high-minded that his associates didn't accuse Jackson of being illiterate while mocking his poor spelling skills and keeping up attacks on his wife, Rachel. The spotlight wore on her, many historians agree, and Jackson believed it probably had a hand in killing her. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of God than live in a palace in Washington, she said. She died December 22nd, 1828, likely of a heart attack. She would be buried on Christmas Eve. Yep. Yep. Um, at a political rally, here we go, in Abraham Lincoln's area, people, era, people got drunk, they had fistfights, they threw excrement, they attacked horses, they screamed and shouted and cursed. Did I mention they drank and drank a lot? This is according to Howard Holzer, historian and Lincoln scholar. In the years before the public flocked to see heavyweights in the ring or the gridiron, many would bring their booze and off-hours aggressions to campaign rallies. Lincoln in particular steered clear of the trail, as outright campaigning was still considered unbecoming a future chief executive. So when one of the four candidates in the 1860 race, the Democrat Stephen Douglas, announced he was going to travel from Chicago to New Hampshire by way of New Orleans to visit his sick mother, sick mother political opponents and partisan press drew their daggers. Douglas made a speech every time the train stopped for water or coal. He mocked brutally as a mama's boy. Little Stephen in search of his mother. Whoa. And on and on and on. So, yeah, don't talk to me about how unbecoming the Republican voters are in this nation that are, that are supporting this evil fascist President Trump. Mm. Uh, yeah. Show me, a, show me a good moderate Republican and I'll show you a loser. And the reason I'll show you a loser is because they don't stand for anything. They stand for looking good politically. They stand for political opportunism and political expedience. I want somebody that stands for being an American. See, I kind of like Americans. I like the way Americans believe. I like the way Americans behave. I like Americans. Is all this working, by the way, on the, feed, the, the the Facebook feed? I just thought I'd like to know. I wanted to make sure it was. Because I was saying brilliant things. I want to make this clear. You are being lied to by the mainstream media. You're being lied to at a critical moment in American history. You're being lied to because it's far more important that a Democrat run the nation into the ground than it is to have somebody that actually believes in the United States of America and its people. They'd rather have somebody return to the era where where gross domestic product is one-third of what it is now. They want to turn this country into a welfare state based on socialism as opposed to a place where people can excel beyond their wildest dreams based on free market capitalism. That's what needs to happen here. We need to remember that there is a There is a vibrant nation that was built on, okay, people getting in the faces of other people. Democrats said that McCain and Romney were moderates that they could vote for. But then again, they didn't, did they? No, because the Republican Party played into that trap. Played into that trap just like like Democrats playing guitar. It was awful. And it worked. But then again, you get a real American standing up there and saying, you guys suck, and here's why, and here's how, and I'm going to fix it, and then goes and does it. And suddenly, he's a fascist. Yeah. Yeah. And by the way, speaking of fascism, what is Ilan Omar talking about these days? You should wait, because I'm going to tell you next on the USA Radio Network. It is a horrible scenario, but it happens. Dennis writes about his wife. She was diagnosed with leukemia. In fact, she's a two-time survivor. And in the midst of all that, they ran up over a million dollars in medical bills. Thankfully, 
They're MediShare members, and Dennis says they are so thankful for that, how others came together to meet their needs, and that's how so many MediShare members feel. This is not health insurance. It's different. You don't have to pay for things you don't believe in, and like Dennis found out, it just works. So if you join MediShare, not only do you save a lot of money, the typical family saves about 500 bucks a month, but you know where your money's going each month. You're helping people, and if the time should come, they'll be helping and even praying for you. So, yes, it's different, and as more than 400,000 people now know, when it comes to health care costs, different is beautiful. Find out more. Call 833-34-BIBLE. That's 833-34-BIBLE. 833-34-BIBLE.